Knicks Nation, I have a big, big surprise for you. As we talk about Game 1, we are four days away from Game 1 at MSG. And my friends at Underdog Fantasy and yours truly, CP the Franchise, are sending you to the Garden for Game 1. Knicks against, we'll see who it is, but we're giving you guys two tickets to Game 1, man. All you have to do, go to Underdog Fantasy, use our code KFTV to sign up, and the winner will be announced on a special edition of Knicks Fan TV this week. Friday. So once again, we are giving away two tickets to game one. It's going to be the hottest ticket in the city. I know the Rangers are playing as well, but mm -hmm. you know it is the Knicks town for right now. Mm -hmm. Hottest ticket in the city, man. Two tickets. CP the Fantasy, Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com or use our link in the video description and sign up. <laughs> Who's guarding Maxi? Where and where do you put Brunson? Yeah, I would think I think you're probably going to throw a lot of DiVincenzo and OG kind of like mix and match, right, on Maxi to slow down. The bigs are going to be very critical in the pick and roll stuff because yeah. a lot of it's going to be pick and pop. It's not going to be at the roll. So the drop coverage, you got to be real careful there. You know, Joel can shoot threes. Mm. They struggle against bigs who shoot threes. You just saw what Vucevic did. Yeah, yeah. So they do really have a hard time with that at KP. That's why Porzingis, you know, shreds the Knicks these days because – that pick and pop, the, the big is dropping because yeah, he's yeah. got to seize the screen. You got to drop so that the guard can recover. Yeah. And that's so his beat on the drive. And then it's just that simple. Yeah. And then it's yeah. just that simple little pocket pass for an open three. And that's what Embiid's going to want to do is shoot threes. He's not going to want to trade paint, you know, down, down under the basket. So um, that's your biggest concern. So, yeah, you're going to have to have some. Focus on that, and that's going to be a lot of OG and a lot of DiVincenzo, probably some Josh Hart at times. I mean, you know, Deuce will be on them. They'll, they're going to throw a lot of guys to try to slow that down. But yeah. the only way to slow that down is you got to make your shots. Right. I think, a, I think a, a, you know, a low percentage Nick shooting could be disastrous. They've got to make shots, especially their threes. Um, otherwise, you're feeding right into what Philly wants yeah. to do and what Nick Nurse wants to do, which is go back to those – Games against the Raptors in the you know two yeah. years, I'm telling you, man, that you were just those Siakam as a blur, you know, uh, uh, like they just had guys that just kept going downhill on you because you miss a shot and they're gone. Um, Nick Nurse going to want to speed them up and mm. uh, and not let the Nick defense get set. So, mm. you know, that matchup with Maxi is going to be critical, yeah. and they're going to put tons of tons of people at him. Uh, you, you spoke about the, their ability to make shots, and to me, that's going to be their biggest weakness going into the postseason. Just in terms, not not in saying that they're not going to make their shots, because when they're on, they can be on. When you look at DiVincenzo and Brunson oh, yeah. and McBride and even Bogdanovich yep. and Oji, they can be on fire. Mm -hmm. But my concern is, even in the Bulls game, we saw this at, at Spurts, where they almost get too shot happy, and you can see the limitations that they have and not having enough guys that can get to the basket, that can draw contact. We're going to miss Julius. You know, that can get oh, yeah. high percentage, easy shots. And that is, to me, where a guy like a heart becomes vital for this team because mm -hmm. I don't see these these teams guarding him. You know, they're going to be crowding the paint, sagging off of him. So what is he going to do in those half-court sets? How is he going to maintain his aggressiveness, try to bend the defense in a way that he can either get himself a high percentage shot or being able to spray it out to maybe OG or DiVincenzo or McBride, whoever's out there on the wings. Yeah, they, they're literally not going to guard him. I've, I've seen games where the opponent like ignores Josh Hart, which is why right. he gets a lot of the things that he's getting because, you know, he'll slash. He'll cut like his motor is what helps because he's yeah. not a guy like, you know, there's some players that if they're not involved in the offense, they stand in the perimeter with their hands on their hips. You know, that's what they do. They just stand there. Right. Like they aren't playing because, oh, I'm not involved. Josh Hart doesn't do that. He just moves. He tries to find places to go. He gets involved just by his motion, mm -hmm. and the ball finds him because the old saying goes, the ball finds energy. So I think that's that's a very important thing. I also think transition with Josh Hart is going to be, be important yeah. because you want to get it and go, and he's so good at just knifing through and getting those quick buckets that can change momentum in a game because of how fast he scores. Uh, you know, it, it, it's all those things, but – you know, I, I continue to say it, it, it sounds so cliche. It's about making shots, mm -hmm. right? But it is. It, it simply is. It's it's shot making is so important in, in in playoff basketball, but especially against a team that is coached by Nick Nurse because he is going to be so quick about getting his athletes out 
uh, you know, Ubre does the same Ubre. thing. He can get some momentum buckets as well with a couple of dunks and starts feeling good. Yeah. Um, good about himself. But in the end, it's going to be how much they can free up Brunson to make sure that he can still get into some one-on-ones where he is one of the most dangerous scorers in the game today. Close to the, in the second half and, and, and going through to the end of the season, I felt like we saw a lot more connectivity between Brunson and iHeart. When I look at this potential Embiid matchup and the Knicks' ability to pull him away from the basket, you know, you don't want him out there as a, as a rim threat. What do you think about those two being able to play off of each other and, you know, kind of n- not neutralizing him because he doesn't really have weaknesses outside of his durability and conditioning, but to to pull him away so that you have more opportunities to find cutters, to find your wing shooters, and also to get Brunson going maybe off of, you know, some dribble handoff, things of that nature. Yeah, I, I actually, you know, it sounds crazy. I, I want to get him involved in playing one-on-one defense. I want his feet moving. Mm. I want to get him tired. Like, I want to wear him out, mm. you know, so... I want to I want to make him have to be active and don't let him be able to just play in space. Like, you know, you love Mitchell Robinson, but you know, Mitch isn't a isn't a threat yeah. offensively. Like, he's not going to do anything with the basketball. He's not going to force a switch. He's, you know, he, he's more of the guy that's going to be a great offensive rebounder and in the dunk spot for a lob. That's fine. But against Embiid, I need him to be active. I got to keep him working. A lot of high screen roll, as you mentioned, with Hartenstein, who can pass. He can make that floater if you're going to drop off. I mean, he's really turned that floater into something special. When in the pick and roll yeah. with either Brunson or DiVincenzo, when the, when, when, he, when the big drops and goes to guard or goes to help on the guard, Hardenstein just fills that spot. Sometimes even Josh Hart will flash in, middle of the paint, wide open, little hook, little, little uh, floater. So those are the things that if I'm forcing Embiid to stay nimble, help retreat, now he's bouncing around on those legs. Like, I'm sorry. I if I if he's standing still on defense at any moment, I'm not doing my job. Not doing the job. I need that guy moving so he's wearing down, so that he's grabbing his shorts and he's hunched over and he's dripping mm-hmm. sweat. I need him to be like that. It, it, so he's miserable. That's what I need to do. You gotta keep testing him, you gotta keep making him work. So Hartenstein might be the biggest X factor in this series, mm. and it's not even on the defensive end. I think it's more what he can do offensively, not just scoring wise, but all the little things he can do to occupy MB to a point where he's grabbing his jersey, needing to get out of the game because he's not at the conditioning level he needs to be at for playoff basketball. Bench rotation, McBride for me, lock. I think Bogdanovich is a lock. Where else do you think that That's goes? It. Is, it, is it Precious maybe or, it. or depending Mitch. on foul trouble? Yeah, Mitch. Mitch, 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 Mitch. And, Pre- Mitch yeah. and Precious, yeah. Like yeah. just depending on situation foul. Like I said, like Precious might be uh, also, even though he's small, like as far as relatively to him being, yeah. his activity, his ability to play on the perimeter, like that stuff is a better matchup, is a more important type type thing. So, you know, in, the, in a series like that against Philly, you'd probably go eight. Um and the ninth would be, you know, including Precious in there. But you're right. It's McBride and Bogdanovich um, just to give Brunson a, a – he can't play 48, right? Yeah, so you got to yeah. give him a little break. Yeah. But I could see minutes with Bogdanovich and Brunson on the floor together. It's worked. It's which worked nicely. I saw Tom do that in Milwaukee, and it looked yeah, really good. It looks. So, yeah. that. But you know how it is. It's, it's going to be tight rotation, man. Yeah. Like this is not one of those, you know <laughs> – the minutes police, they need to go away in the postseason. Like <laughs> yeah. everybody plays a ton. Full steam. Like, let's not let's not start counting minutes and worrying about like I love the helicopter parents that we have as fans <laughs> in the NBA these days who are just, you know, oh like the the baseball fan, I, I don't know. You know, a pitcher reaches like eighty pitches. Our our baseball fan, oh you gotta get him out. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, he's in eighty pitches. Oh my god. No, no. Yeah. When when a pitcher is is humming along, he's at eighty pitches, great. Keep going. Like let's yeah. keep him in there. Like I, I'm, it's the only sport I know where they talk about like how much he's playing too much. Yeah. Imagine that playing too much. Oh my Players God, he's play. playing too much. Why is he playing so much? But, he's playing great. That's why he's playing so much. Players want to yeah. play, man. I had to get that out. Uh, of course, I, 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 I've, I've, I've liked the way that <laughs> in these last few games, kind of seems like strategically they're trying to protect Bogdanovich by putting him out there with McBride and OG. Yeah. Sometimes Mitch. Oh yeah. 
the Dante. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to be mm-hmm. key, especially in the playoffs, because he, he's going to be a marked man every oh, time they're he's out be, there. Oh, my God. You're so right. Like, you know, it's like in the NFL, I, I had a I had a Super Bowl winning defensive lineman tell me that a lot of times you will, against certain opponents, you'll look at an offensive line and go, who's the fish? Mm. And then, all right, that guy, he sucks. All right, so mm. we all take turns, uh, one-on-ones against that guy so we can all get a sack, right? So in the NBA, I've always I've used that, and now I watch NBA games, and I'm like, all right, who's the fish? How do they find him? And it's amazing to me how a bad defender against good teams gets found quickly. Quick. And you're like, switch, switch, boom, whoa. Yep. How did he get on Steph Curry? Because Steve Kerr knows <laughs> we got to get that guy over and let's get the switch. And now Steph Curry is going to just eat this guy a lot. And for Bogdanovich, unfortunately, that's, you know, that's happened to him. It's happened to Evan Fournier yeah. as well. So, yeah, they've got to have guys out there that can help him and, you know, protect him as much as possible. But you know it's coming and you know it's going to happen. True. It's a matter of surviving those minutes. <laughs> 